Hello, in this video I will explain uh, theoretical concepts in relation to kinematic control of mobile robots with uh, wheels using a technique known by off-center kinematic control. Therefore the aim of the presentation uh, is on the one hand to understand the concept of kinematic control and its application for uh, trajectory tracking. I will explain some basic concepts on feedback control and specifically for mobile robots with wheels. I will explain the difficulty of uh, their kinematic control as a result of being subject to a non holonomic constraint that will appear in the vast majority of mobile robots. And finally, I will explain all the mathematical background related to the proposed off center kinematic control and the closed loop structure. So, first, we need to understand the concept of kinematic control. The ultimate goal uh, is to determine a set of control actions. Uh, that is, wheel speeds that allow, allow uh, to reach a final configuration from an initial configuration. Uh, in kinematic control, aspects such as obstacle avoidance are not considered. Uh, that's a task uh, typically considered in motion planning algorithms. And um, there are two uh, classic approaches uh, trajectory tracking and path following. In the case of trajectories, the objective here is to define a set of target configurations over the time. While in a path following, the path is defined as a set of desired configurations regardless uh, of uh, time. And the, the objective is to define a strategy so the robot converges to the path. So, um, in this presentation, uh, I will focus on trajectory tracking problems. So, in this sense, I, ex I will explain some very concepts or very basic concepts on feedback control systems. Uh, in its most simplified version, okay. So, in a classic control loop, we find on the one hand uh, the system to be controlled. Sometimes this is known as a model or process, depending on the context. And on the other hand, we have a controller uh, or controller, um, whose objective is uh, to uh, minimize the error between uh, a reference or set point and the measured output, okay. So here um, I show three uh, basic examples of uh, control laws that we can find uh, classically in the literature. Uh, on the one hand, um, there's a proportional uh, controller or p-control, which states that the wheels in this case uh, speeds are proportional to the error between uh, the reference configuration and the robot configuration. A PD control uh, includes a derivative term that um, basically in, uh, includes also the, the, the speed error. And finally, uh, proportional velocity uh, control, uh, it has an advantage over uh, proportional derivative because we don't need to obtain the derivatives of the configuration, um, but it uses a feedforward, uh, in this case, uh, reference uh, for the speed. So, uh, these controllers, they do not include any kind of integral action because the process itself, the robot, already includes, includes this uh, integrator by uh, integrating indeed the model uh, or the, the, the process equation, as you can see here, over time. Okay? So, a very, concept, uh, sorry, a very important concept in mobile robots with wheels is the concept of non holonomic constraint. Uh, which is, or has been explained in a previous video uh, about uh, uh, wheels types and also uh, types of robots. So, in this case, um, uh, on this kind of robots, we are going to deal with, uh, with differential configuration, fixed wheels indeed introduce a non holonomic constraint. So, in practice, uh, we have to control a robot uh, over uh, R2 uh, times S space, which means that Cartesian x, y space together with the orientation, uh, using a set of control actions that are defined in the R2 space, which are indeed the, the wheel speeds. Okay? So, um, due to the non holonomic constraint, this implies that the robot is not controllable in specific directions at any time instant, so only on, uh, on certain directions. And therefore, the control to be designed must take these considerations into account. So, to understand the concept of non holonomic constraint, we actually we can see that the robot's uh, uh, base velocities, the velocity in x and y, are not arbitrary and they do depend on the actual robot configuration 
or uh, sorry, or, uh, orientation, and also on the linear velocity of the robot. So, on the other hand, uh, the, the orientation of the robot could, uh, can be modified from the angular velocity. And both a linear and angular velocities can be obtained from, from the wheels velocities, which can be measured uh, with sensors such as encoders uh, attached to the wheels. Okay? So, as a consequence uh, of the non holonomic constraint, we cannot control without considering that not all directions are directly controllable. Okay? For instance, we cannot control a lateral uh, movement of the robot using this kind of uh, wheels. So, for this reason, the proposed control is based on the concept of an uh, off center point. This is a point at a distance e, in this case, uh, from the central point of the robot that we will usually place just right in front of the robot. Um, the maths for computing the position of these points are rather quite uh, straightforward and they can be obtained directly from the robot configuration considering this distance e. Okay. So, uh, similarly we can get the speed of that point, the maths uh, related with the speed of that point. It's just, we just simply need to, to do the derivative of the previous equations. And um, you can see that it depends on, on the one hand, it depends on the, the actual speed of the robot, uh, the speed in x and y axis, but also depends on the angular speed as well as obviously the orientation. Okay? So, uh, we can express uh, uh, all this uh, in a compact notation, and indeed, if we try to obtain the, the velocities of the off center point, uh, related with the velocities of the wheels, uh, we can see that uh, in a compact form we have what is known as the Jacobian matrix. This is the Jacobian matrix that relates the speeds between uh, the wheels and the off center point in this case. And also we can compute the inverse relation of this Jacobian matrix to determine actually that the speed of the wheels that they, uh, they should have uh, for a given uh, speed uh, for the off center point. Okay, so the, the, the actual uh, task for the control will actually be to define this uh, speed for the off center point. Uh, as you can see, this matrix uh, is rather quite simple, uh, basically, it depends on the orientation of the robot and also it depends on the distance e uh, of the off center point, which is indeed a design parameter. So, uh, with all these ingredients, uh, we have uh, the following control loop. On the one hand, we have the trajectory uh, generator here that uh, it's responsi responsible uh, for generating the uh, reference or the conf uh, configuration reference and also the, the velocities for this uh, reference. Also, we have uh, a module which is uh, known as off center trajectory here which basically uh, using this uh, trajectory here computes also the uh, reference trajectory but for the off center point and um, this trajectory will, will be indeed compared with uh, the off center point itself that can be obtained from the robot pose and this difference is known as the tracking error so the task of the uh, controller will be actually to minimize uh, or to make this error to zero so, uh, it provides a desired off-center uh, point velocities and we can apply that using the inverse kinematic uh, equations that I showed you before and that would uh, actually uh, derive to the desired wheels that we need to apply to the robot. So, more specifically, if uh, you want to implement the PV kinematic control and then you have to implement uh, the, the following equations. So, here you can see we have the inverse uh, kinematics, which is this expression here. We have the velocity of the off center point, and we have also here the error between the off center uh, uh, reference point and the uh, robot ref off center point. And this error will be multiplied in this case with a gain, which is kp and this is actually a proportional uh, control, okay? And this is the part in which we provide the feed forward of the velocity of, uh, of the reference, okay? So, uh, similarly we could also apply a PD control. Uh, the main difference here is that we must consider not only the position of the off-center point, but also its speed, okay? As you can see here, okay? 
and this implies that we must compute uh, the robot linear and angular velocity, but this is something we can easily do from the actual odometry system of the robot. So, in this video, uh, I have explained the kinematic control uh, using a technique known as off center point that can be applied to uh, mobile robots with uh, differential configuration for uh, uh, trajectory tracking problems. Thank you very much.